We're in chapter 11, all about angles. This is 11.1. We're going to talk about angles and fractional parts of a circle or clock. We can relate angles and fractional parts of a circle by using a fraction piece to draw an angle, then turning the piece to keep drawing angles until we make a circle. And we can do this with any size fraction circle piece. We use the fraction piece to draw an angle. We keep turning the fraction piece, connecting the sides, until we make a circle. We draw a line along the side of it. We can connect the top. And the center point of the circle, right here, is the vertex of each angle. The straight sides of each angle will be rays. Remember, a ray starts at an endpoint and goes outward, and it has an arrowhead at the end of it showing it goes on forever. And the vertex of each angle will be the center point of the circle. And there are six angles that share the center point as a vertex in this circle. We have one six, one six, one six, all the way around. That's one, two, three, four, five, six parts. Each part is one of six, so it's one-sixths. We have six angles, and they all share the center point as a vertex. And we can relate the one-twelfth size part of a circle to a clock face. Three-twelfths is equal to one-fourth. And the angle formed by a one-fourth piece is three times as large as a one-twelfth piece. That's why it takes three of these to equal one of these. And three-twelfths is equal to one-fourth. If you remember from simplifying fractions, this video is linked th into the description. We have three-twelfths. We divide both the numerator and denominator by the same common factor that they have. They both have a common factor of three. So we do 3 divided by 3 is 1, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 3 twelfths is equal to 1 fourth. We can relate fractions and angles to the hands of a clock. We can think of the hands of a clock as the rays of an angle. And a clock's hands go clockwise. And if we go opposite the directions of a clock's hands, we're going counterclockwise. Each five-minute mark on an analog clock represents one-twelfth turn going clockwise. From the twelve to the one, that's five minutes. To the two, that's ten. To the three, that's fifteen. And each number is one-twelfth of the hour. One-twelfth is one of twelve equal parts. This would be one-twelfth. It's five minutes for the minute hand. 15 minutes is 3 of 12 equal parts. It's 3 twelfths. We can see the minute hands pointing to the 3 out of the 12 numbers. It's 3 twelfths. And 3 twelfths is equal to 1 fourth turn clockwise. It's 1 fourth of an hour. 30 minutes, we can see the minute hands pointing to the 6. That's 6 out of 12 equal parts. It's 6 twelfths. It's equal to one half turn clockwise. That's one half of an hour. 45 minutes, we see it's pointing to the nine. It's nine of 12 equal parts. It's nine twelfths. That's equal to three fourths turn clockwise or three fourths of an hour. And 60 minutes, that's 12 of 12 equal parts. Or if we're looking at it as fourths, it's four fourths. That's one whole turn clockwise. It's one full hour. And 15 minutes is one fourth. We can do 15 minutes plus 15 plus 15 plus 15, which is equal to four times 15 minutes. That's 60 minutes for an entire hour. And any 15 minutes is one fourth of an hour. We have five, 10, 15 minutes. That is one fourth of an hour. If it's hard to tell if it's one-fourth of an hour or what fraction it is, 
we can turn our paper or our book. We can turn it so this 4 is on the top where the 12 was. We can see that this is 1 fourth. Any 30 minutes is a half an hour. It doesn't matter where it starts. We could turn this clock so the 8 is on the top. We can e easily see that that's half of the hour. And any 45 minutes is 3 fourths of an hour. Again, if we're having trouble seeing it, we can turn this so that the 1 is on top. And we can see it's 3 fourths of an hour. We can tell what fraction of an hour has passed on an analog clock starting at any minute. We can tell what fraction of a circle a shaded angle represents. We can think of a clock face. So what fraction of a circle does this shaded angle represent? If you said one-fourth, you're correct. And what fraction of a circle does this shaded angle represent? If you said one-half, you're correct. And what about this one? If we have difficulty figuring it out, we can always turn it. But look at the size of the white part here. We're looking for the fraction of the shaded angle. If you said 3 fourths, you're correct. And what about this one? It's just a little shaded part. If we have trouble figuring out what fraction it is, we can draw the marks of a quarter hour on the edges. And if that still doesn't help us, we can draw the other lines of what would be on a clock face. We could even draw the numbers around the edges if that would help us. And we can see that this is one of 12 parts. It's 1 12th. The position of the angle does not affect the size of the angle. We can tell whether the angle on the circle shows 1 4th, 1 half, 3 4ths, or 1 full turn clockwise or counterclockwise, and the angle is represented by the curved arrow. So what fraction of a turn do you think that is? If you said one-fourth, you're correct. And did it turn clockwise or counterclockwise? Look at the direction the arrow is going. So it's going around this way. If you said clockwise, you're correct. And do you think this angle shows one-fourth, one-half, three-fourths, or one full turn? If you said one-half, you're correct. And did it turn clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, this is clockwise. This arrow is going the other direction. It's going the opposite direction of clock hands. So it's going counterclockwise. It made a half turn counterclockwise. Let's try a few higher order thinking skills problems. Remember there are 60 minutes in each hour. Here, this is showing 10 minutes has elapsed. So what fraction is that? What twelfths is that? Look at the minute hand. It's pointing to the two. It's on a two out of 12 numbers. That's two twelfths. And two twelfths is equal to how many sixths? If you remember equivalent fractions and simplifying, we learned that in 6.2 and 6.3, we think 12 divided by some number is six. That would be 12 divided by two. We need to divide this numerator by the same amount. We do two divided by two, that's a one. Two twelfths is equal to one six. That's one six turn clockwise. We can see the arrow is going in the clockwise direction. And what fraction of an hour would that be? Well, it would be two twelfths, but in simplified form, it would be one sixth of an hour. Here, 20 minutes has elapsed. How many twelfths of an hour is that? When we look at the 
minute hand pointing to the four, that's four out of 12 numbers, that's four out of 12, that's four twelfths. And four twelfths is equal to how many thirds of a turn? We look at the denominator and say, what can we do to this 12 to make it a three? We could do 12 divided by four equals three. So we need to do the same thing to the numerator, four divided by four, that's equal to one. Four twelfths is equal to one third. That's one third turn clockwise. So what fraction of an hour would that be? Well, it would be four twelfths of an hour, but simplified, it would be one third of an hour. And what about this one? It's 40 minutes, 40 minutes is elapsed. How many twelfths of an hour is that? It's pointing to the eight out of 12 numbers. That would be eight twelfths. And how many thirds would that be equal to? Again, we look at the denominators and we say, what can we do to this 12 to make it a three? We can do 12 divided by four. We have to do the same thing to the numerator and eight divided by four is equal to two. That would be two thirds turn clockwise. And what fraction of an hour would that be? It would be eight twelfths, but in simplified form, it would be two thirds of an hour. Emma finished her household chores in 30 minutes. Describe the turn the minute hand made. So here's when it started, it was at the 12 and the minute hand went around and now it's on the six. So the minute hand made what fraction of a turn? If you said half, you're right. And what direction did it turn? Well, it's a minute hand and it went around to the six. If you said clockwise, you're right. It made a half turn clockwise. In our next lesson 11.2, we're gonna talk about how degrees and fractional parts of a circle are related. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. I hope it's a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye.